I want to thank everybody for coming on such a beautiful day and coming inside and listening to us speak and both of my fellow presenters. Um, I don't know if anybody saw me over in the corner scribbling furiously to just learn and soak up all the knowledge that's being shared today. And it's just been an honor to be on this panel with you. So, um, as Melanie said, my name is Kristen Kazabowski, and my title is Environmental Communications Coordinator at the Community Foundation for Greater Buffalo. So, I have a few, a few pictures up on this slide. I, a quick background, I studied communications management and design at Ithaca College. And if anybody's ever been to Ithaca, you know that there's a very, very rich, sustainable culture there. And being surrounded by it every day while I was studying communications really, it just was a very a rewarding experience to see the small steps I could take throughout campus and throughout the town that would make a big difference in the environment in the long run. And then also get the tools and skills to learn how to communicate that to people who might not really have that aha moment that we had been talking about through the other presentations. And I was a native of Western New York and I came back here after graduation and I've always had a passion for the outdoors, hiking, enjoying the gorges when I was in Ithaca, but also enjoying all the parks and great recreation spaces we have here. And I was really excited when I got the opportunity through AmeriCorps to connect those two ideas and work as at the Community Foundation on GROW and the Alliance work and with all the environmental initiatives there. You can go to that. So, one more click. I'm a very visual person, and so I'm going to paint a little bit of an environmental scene now that everyone knows that I love the outdoors um, to kind of really connect all the dots with a lot of the key players that I work with every day. So as I mentioned, I work at the Community Foundation for Greater Buffalo. And the Community Foundation for Greater Buffalo, I kind of imagine them as the sun in this instance. Mm -hmm. um, they are looking over our region and looking for ways to improve the lives of all those in Western New York and really make our region a bright and vibrant and inclusive place to live. And they do this through the generosity of many donors, some of which specify where they want their money to go. Others give it and say, you know, you guys know the needs of the community as you're assessing them let us our donation go to what you think is the most important need at that time and we all know that the environment is one of the big needs so if you have one more click they're up there and they were looking at the environment of our region and the environmental movement and there is a lot of organizations out there environmental organizations and environmental individuals who are working for our environment and I kind of picture all of these people and these organizations as the roots of a tree they're very spread out some of them intersect some of them don't some of them are big some of them are small some of them are grassroots no pun intended <laughs> and they're all connected because they care about our environment so the environment is like the trunk that brings everybody together. And the Community Foundation wanted a way to connect the roots and not just in the trunk area. So they wanted to collaborate, bring a collaboration between all the organizations and individuals interested in the environment. So they convened them with the idea of the Western New York Environmental Alliance, which is a working group of groups and it has over a hundred member organizations, supporters, and affiliates that are all working within their own organizations, but across the board to really just make our environment in our region a better place and to preserve and protect it. And they, they organized and they have a nice logo, so we're gonna put that up there. <laughs> and so looking at the environment, you can't just look at it as one big problem. You have to kind of break it down. So I kind of see these key focus areas as the branches of our tree. Two clicks. So the Environmental Alliance is broken down into working groups. There's environmental justice, growing, urban regeneration, parks and recreation, transportation, habitat and natural resources, waste and pollution, and energy and climate change. Now, each of these groups convene usually on a monthly basis, and they have representations from all the different member organizations or supporters and affiliates. For instance, the growing group, we have members from the Cornell Cooperative Extension of Erie County, Niagara County. We also have local farmers that come and talk to us. And 
youth from Massachusetts Avenue Project come. And we sit there and we discuss, you know, what issues is Western New York facing in the agricultural sec sector? What food, food <clears throat> what food policy issues are we facing? And they created an action agenda item, which was to increase the education of food policy councils in our region. So that's kind of the breakdown of how the alliance works. If you click it one more time, two more times actually. So what's, what's a tree without the leaves, right? <laughs> you kind of look at a tree, and for a lot of people who may not be as interested in trees as I am, are, they're not going to think about the root system that's holding it up. They're not going to think about the branches or the bark of the tree. They want to look at the pretty leaves, especially when they're changing in the fall. And so the Community Foundation and the Western New York Environmental Alliance realized that this is where people's attention are going. So we need to grab their attention where they're looking. So that is where growny.org came in. It is the face of the Western New York Environmental Alliance, and it is a virtual town square of information and resources for community members to go and learn about taking that first step, learn about different people's aha moments and how they can find their own moment where they make that one little, one little change in their life that leads to a more sustainable future and a more sustainable path for them. And we do that on Grow through blogging, um, through the support of the Western New York Environmental Alliance and all their work. We blog about what they're doing so people can know what's going on and figure out how to get involved and what they should be doing. So this is the scene where I kind of came in. And this is where you know, the really passionate part of me came out because my passion is in communication and figuring out how to turn you know, one, one, an A into a B to get people to understand an environmental story about the complex root system without having to actually get out the big textbook and go through it. How do you make that message simple so that somebody who just wants to look at the leaves can understand how the whole tree works? So I, every day I get to work with different member organizations and everybody in the alliance and learn from them because they're the experts, and I get to figure out how to transform their message into something that everybody can understand, even if people are just going to take two seconds to click on a blog or, or like a Facebook post. But we realized that there was one more need, and out of this grew our newest initiative, which is called Grow 716. Everybody, we had mentioned in, um, in Paige's um, presentation that everybody was plugging in their cell phones right away because that's how they connect. So we realized that too, everybody's connecting through these cell phones. So how are we reaching these people at their fingertips? If they're not going to go to the website, we want to go to them through a, something that they're looking at every day. And through this idea came Grow 716. 716, kind of the Buffalo theme, the greater it's the area code. Um, and it's really the action component. So you can educate yourself through growwny.org and you can take action through this Grow 716 project. You can text us when you see a problem in your neighborhood. You can tell us what that problem is and we can connect you with the environmental organization or the environmental expert who can help change it and make it a more positive impact in the community. And we've been working a lot to pilot this. It's in the, still in the development phases. We've had a mobile website up for about a month now, and we've been working with a lot of our partner organizations to really develop it. Um, and I'm going to actually ask you to go to the next slide. This is the website that I was talking about, and I'm going to go into the campaign as well, one of our example campaigns. So this is a mobile-friendly website, which is really cool. And I think we have internet access. So I'm going to, can we exit out of the PowerPoint real quick and pull up that browser? So this is the online version of the, the website. It's mobile-friendly, which means you can access it on your smartphones. Um, and it shrinks in size, so it makes the, it's the right size on your phone. And it's very easy to read. And we can go to campaigns to trucks. <clears throat> so we're call this is a community journalism project because it empowers the community to tell us their stories. And one of their stories, the Clean Air Coalition, if you click right there on trucks, the Clean Air Coalition noticed that there's a lot of trucks in the west side of Buffalo around the Peace Bridge area. 
It's illegal for a truck to idle for more than five minutes. And a lot of times trucks will pull off into a side street and wait there. And they'll just be running and running and running. And that causes the people in that community to have to breathe in all those exhaust fumes. So they wanted to empower the people in the community to do something about it. So they set up this campaign with us. And if you see a truck idling, you can pull out your phone and text trucks to 877-877. And you'll get a response back. And it's going to say, where is that truck? Where are you right now? And then once you answer, it'll say, you know, how long has the truck been idling for? It gives us a communication, a conversation with people that the Clean Air Coalition can't go out and talk to these people every time they see a truck. So they can do it through texting now. And we've been able to plot points on a map where there have been a lot of trucks idling. Franklin Street, Nalen Street, they're different colors based on how long they've been idling for. And um, there's a whole lot of different variables that go along into that. And so this lets people, gives people the power to report it. And the Clean Air Coalition is going to be working to get more enforcement in those areas to try and keep those trucks out of those neighborhoods, keep the fumes out of the neighborhoods. So we can go back to the PowerPoint. A lot of technical juggling over here. <laughs> so, and two, one more. So, I think the best way to really understand how this texting program works is to try it out. So I did set up a campaign if anybody wants to participate. We talked about some of the working groups in the Western New York Environmental Alliance. If any one of those working groups has piqued your interest and you maybe want to attend a meeting, they are open to the public. You can go and learn about what that Environmental Alliance group is doing, um, what they're working on. If you text the red word to 877-877, it's going to tell you when the next meeting is. So if you pull out your phone right now, I'm not going to be offended. <laughs> you can text, you know, if you're interested in the Parks and Recreation Group, text PR to 877-877, and you'll get a response back with some information. And so we've been developing this texting campaign and working with a lot of different organizations. Melanie and I were just talking earlier about Buffalo Young, Buffalo's Young Preservationists. And we're working with them to create campaigns to report buildings that, you know, people pass these buildings in their neighborhood every day and they want something done with them. They want them taken care of. They want them to be used, create a vibrant community. So we've been working with them to develop a way for community members to let us know where these buildings are so people can survey them and figure out what the best use is for them. So. It's really all about putting the power in the hands of the people and definitely education, arming yourself with education as Tyra said, and then taking that action, that next step through a simple thing that you might be looking at every day on your phone. So that's pretty much it for me. Any questions? Probably next, right? Thank <laughs> you.